Hello everyone and welcome back to AWS Simplified. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to invoke a Lambda function from another Lambda function. So I have an architecture diagram here just to explain what I'm doing and how this whole thing is going to work. So let's just quickly walk through this so it makes sense when we get to the console. So here we have two Lambda functions. We have an invoker Lambda function, which is going to be the one that's calling the other Lambda function. And then we have the other Lambda function, which is the one that is going to be called. And I'm calling that the Lambda to invoke. Okay, so two Lambda functions, the caller and the callee. So associated with this initial Lambda function that's going to do the calling is an IAM role. And this IAM role has two major policies. The first one is just the Lambda basic execution role, which you need on all Lambda functions. And the second one is uh, two actions here. So the Lambda invoke function action and the Lambda invoke async action. Uh, so the invoke function is for the synchronous and the invoke async is for the asynchronous. If you don't know what this means, this will make sense in a few moments when I get to that part. And then also associated with this is the resource. So here that we're specifying that this is a global permission for any Lambda function. If you wanted to, you can specify and say that this policy only applies to this Lambda function, but I'm gonna keep this global for now just for simplicity's sake. So in terms of what's actually gonna happen between these two Lambda functions, the invoker is going to call the Lambda to invoke or the callee with a payload and the payload is gonna look like this. You're gonna have a JSON object that has a customer ID and it's gonna pass in a value like one, two, three, and it's gonna say maybe in an amount, so 50 in this case. And then the callee is going to read that input. So it's gonna specifically look for the customer ID value, so one, two, three in this case. And then it's gonna populate its own response and it's gonna share that same value that was passed in. In addition, it's gonna do two other things. So we're gonna have a transaction ID and this is just gonna be some random value that I generate and then a success marker to say whether or not this succeeded. I'm just gonna hard code this to true, but in your case, you may wanna make this true or false. Uh, so this is what's going on and let's head over to the console now and actually make this thing happen. All right, guys, here we are in the console. So firstly, I'm gonna to go to the Lambda section to take a look at what we have. Okay, so I pre-created the callee function or the Lambda that's going to be invoked from the other function. Uh, so I named that Lambda to invoke. So let's quickly take a look at its definition. So clicking on that. Okay, let's scroll down and take a look at what's going on. Okay, so here's our Lambda definition here. So let's take a closer look at this code. So we have our Lambda handler function takes in an event and a context object. The first thing we wanna do is read off the input arguments. So we're reading off the event objects customer ID field and storing that in the customer ID variable. Uh, the second thing we're gonna do is generate a random ID. So we're gonna be using the UUID library and here I am calling the UUID one function that just generates some random hash for us. I'm gonna convert that to string because we need that um, when we're formulating our response. And then we're storing that hash in a transaction ID variable. Um, in your function, the third step is probably to do something interesting. Maybe you wanna do some business logic here on the arguments that are being passed in. Maybe you wanna to save to S3 or write to a database or something like that. This is where you would do it. It's in this third step here. And then once that's finished, finally you wanna return a response to your caller. So in this bottom part here, number four, I'm just formulating the response and returning that back to the caller. So we have a customer ID key here and that key's value is associated with the variable that we extracted earlier from the input arguments customer ID field. So whatever is passed in as the customer ID, that value is gonna be piped into the response. So that's what's going on here. So just hard coding a success marker here, saying that success is true, assuming the function made it this far. And then finally, we have a transaction ID key here. And the value here is that UUID that we specified up here. Uh, so that transaction ID is UUID. So before we move to the next step, I want to copy the ARN because that is going to be important when we call our function. We're gonna need that when we're passing in the arguments to the Bodo3 invoke function. Uh, so make sure you copy that and save it to your clipboard or put it aside. I just copied mine. I'm gonna go over here and just paste it into my Sublime editor so I can refer to it later. Uh, other than that, this function is completely vanilla. There's nothing special going on here. Uh, just use the default role. So whenever you create a function, Lambda offers to use a default role. So that's what I did when I created it. Uh, again, nothing, nothing special here about this function, okay? So now let's head back over to the Lambda section and create our caller function that is going to 
call or invoke this function and inspect the response. So let's click on create function now. And we're gonna do this one from scratch. And function name, I believe I originally said this thing was gonna be called invoker, so let's call it the same thing. And then we're gonna be using Python 3.8, so let's select that. And one mandatory step here is the permissions. So um, in that original architecture diagram that I was showing, we need to specify a role that has some very specific permissions associated with it. One is the invoke function. That's for a synchronous invocation or a request reply model where you're making a request and waiting for the reply. And then the invoke async is when you want to fire and forget. So you want to call the other function and just you don't care about the response. You just want to invoke it and that's it. You don't care whether or not it succeeded or failed. You want that other Lambda to handle it. So I already pre-created that role. So let's select it now. So we want to select use an existing role. And then I'm going to select my role here. So again, this role has those two Lambda permissions associated with it. It also has the Lambda basic execution role associated with it. Um, this is mandatory for your Lambda function as well. And if you need a reference here, I'm going to paste the policy document or the role document that has the policies within it in the description section of this video so that you can just copy and paste it into the IAM section and you don't have to struggle with any of the details. Uh, so let's move on now, now that we've specified that role, and click on Create Function. Okay, so that Lambda was created successfully. That's great. Let's go down to the code section here. Uh, so this is the default stuff. Let's just copy this out and go to Sublime, just because I'm more comfortable there. Okay, pasting that in. All right, so let's get rid of some of this junk here. We don't need any of this stuff. We're going to be defining our own. And okay, so let's get to it. So import JSON, we're gonna keep that. We actually need that. We're gonna be importing the Bodo3 library, which lets us interact with the Lambda APIs. Uh, so make sure you do that. Also wanna define a client, and we're gonna say Bodo3.client, and then we're gonna say we want a Lambda client. And this is gonna offer APIs like invoke or invoke async or whatever you wanna do uh, to interact with your Lambda function. Uh, so that looks good. Let's move on now to define our inputs for the function that we're going to call. And if you remember, the function that we're calling reads off a customer ID field that gets passed in. So let's define a object here that it has a customer ID field in a Python dictionary. So let's say, okay, input for evoker. I'm gonna say customer ID is the key and the value. You can make this thing whatever you want, doesn't really matter. Now let's just for fun define a second field. This is just gonna be ignored basically from the other Lambda function, but let's just include that. Okay, so now we have the input that we specified. Now that's basically all you need for the input. So now we wanna actually call our function. And when we call our function, we're gonna store that in the response variable. So let's say response equals. And now we wanna call the client.invoke API. So we're gonna say client.invoke. And this thing takes a bunch of arguments in it. So let's go through each one by one. So the first one is function name. So in function name, you can actually specify the literal function name. So I believe the other one that I called, uh, the function that I'm calling was lambda to invoke or whatever it was. Uh, I prefer to be more specific, which is why I copied that ARN and I'm gonna paste that in instead. Um, it's up to you. It, this is probably the better way if you're doing cross account invocations because you need a specific ARN in order for Lambda to know which function you wanna invoke. Uh, if you're doing this within the same account, you can just use the name of the function. But uh, for kind of completion's sake, I'm just gonna include the entire ARN. Don't forget to add a comma, scrolling back here. The second thing that we need to specify is the invocation type. So there's two main types. There's the request response, which is what we are going to use. And then there is the event type. And let's just actually put that in a comment here. Uh, so the main difference here, I think I touched on this previously in the video, in the request response invocation type, you're gonna make a response to the Lambda function and you're gonna wait for that response. You're not gonna exit early. So you're gonna wait for that Lambda to actually perform its logic. Maybe it writes does three or writes to Dynamo or does whatever it does. And then you're gonna wait for that and finally get that response object back. And in this case, we're gonna store it in our response variable. Uh, that's different than the event invocation type. So say we had an application where we just kind of want to call our Lambda. We don't, it doesn't return anything, or maybe we don't even care what it returns. We just want to make sure that we call it. 
In that case, we can use an asynchronous invocation. And what that would allow us to do is basically fire and forget. So we call it and then Lambda handles actually invoking it. And assuming the function that we're calling is set up correctly, it should be able to handle failures. And it would do that by using a dead letter queue or some kind of retry policy that's built into that function. Uh, so for this case, since we actually care about the response, we're going to use the request response invocation type. Um, but in your application, you may want to use events. So just keep that in mind. The third thing is we want to specify the payload and the payload is that object that we created up here, the input for invoker. And we want to convert that into JSON because currently it's a Python dictionary object. So we want to say json.dumps and we just pass in that object. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty much it for calling the function. So at this point, when, if we run this code as it is, it'll be calling that Lambda function. I won't be doing anything with that response, but let's actually do that now. Uh, so if we want to actually parse the response into a local dictionary object, uh, we would do that by doing it like this. So we can say response JSON is equal to JSON.load. And then you would say response. And then the key is the payload. So in the original response object, the object will have a payload key and the payload will contain the JSON object that the callee function is actually returning back to you. Uh, so as I was specifying before, we had things like transaction ID, customer ID, success, true or false. That data, that value is going to be inside the payload key of the response object. So we are storing that in a, in a um, response JSON variable. Then we can just return or print this uh, response JSON back. So we can actually take a look at the logs and let's actually like pretty print this a little bit. Just add a new line so that we can see what's going on. Copy that, put it down there. Okay, so this looks good as it is. So just to recap, uh, we have a input that we are specifying with a customer ID, and then we are calling the Lambda function with the client.invoke API, specifying the function name, invocation type is request response, and then we are specifying the payload to be the input that we specified over here. And then we're just kind of taking a look at what the response of that other function is. So this all looks good. Let's copy this out now and go back to the console here. All right, so now we can just paste that in, click on save. Now we actually wanna test this thing out. So let's go to configure test events. And in this case, we actually are not providing any input into this Lambda function. So we can just leave all this stuff as default. If you scroll down and click on create. Oh, we need to specify a name, a name, sure. Clicking on create now. And then click on test to actually test this thing out. And hopefully if this worked correctly, we'll see a success, which we did. Now let's go and look at the response here. So we can see here that we were successful and the response JSON over here, the response JSON contains a JSON object with a customer ID is what we specified. Success is true and transaction is just some random UUID. So if I just invoke this, click on test a few more times, you can see I call it over and over again. We're seeing a different value here being generated for the transaction ID. So if you enjoyed this video, I have a great Lambda function playlist that I'll leave a link to that covers many more topics regarding Lambda functions. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on next week's video. Thanks so much, folks, and I'll see you next time.